Okay, welcome to the show. And yes, we're starting off with that. What we talked about mental health. I know it's uh, yes, um, and in a world that is increasingly opening up to and understanding those with mental health issues, it's no surprise that Mental Health Awareness Week is now a firmer fixture on calendars around the world. According to the World Health Organization, half of all mental illness begins around the age of 14, but most cases go undetected and untreated. In terms of the burden of the disease among adolescents, depression is the third leading cause. So we need to pay attention to our children because some of them don't actually come out and tell us what kinds of issues they're grappling with. So when we notice our children becoming more withdrawn, hmm, I'm, I'm now stepping into areas that I'm not qualified to, but uh, <laughs> we need to call them and have a chat with them. Well, those who know better are in the studio this morning. Um, it's my pleasure to welcome a consultant psychiatrist, Dr. Ogonaya Ndupu. Good, Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, we also have um, Dr. Peter Nubi, who is a consultant psychiatrist Good as well. Good Nubi. Okay. <laughs> and um, uh, Hawa Ojefo is a mental health advocate. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you all very much for coming this morning. So let me begin with you, madam. Ladies first. After men. Well, it won't be after men today. <laughs> <laughs> How serious are our mental health issues in Nigeria? Extremely. Extremely very serious issues. And um, for us in Nigeria, I think the major issue is stigma, awareness. Till date, people still shy away from having a mental, review, mental health review, such as, okay, there's a need to see a specialist people would rather suffer than seek for help. Mm. Because of the stigma? Yes, because mm. of the stigma. Mm. People, do not, people do not want to be labeled. People think that very often people neglect their mental health. It's an aspect of health that we never get to talk about. Okay. Not they don't want to be termed mad. That's, you know, they had some... Um, over time, there are wrong terms and there have been stereotypes about mental health. And a lot of people still live in those stereotypes. They think you've been asked to see a psychiatrist means... You're mad. You're mad. And they say, my case is not that bad, doctor. It hasn't gotten to the point where I need to see you. But a lot of time, there are so many mental illnesses that could be prevented. Mm. When they get to us, things have really gone Sometimes bad. it's too late. Yes, it's too late. And, and Dr. Dr. Luby. What? Because um, we're, we're told that the, it begins to show from when a, the person is probably about 14 years old. So they're still living with their parents. They're young people. So what should parents be looking out for so that they can take their children to seek help? Thank you very much. Uh, just as you said, it's a serious issue. And uh, I think the first thing is for you to know your words or your children. When I say no, know the character, know the personality. Mm -hmm. If you have three children, they will not have the same personality. And as much as possible, when you know that this person, for example, a boisterous child, mm. always happy-go-lucky, moving up around the house, all the activities in the school is always there, and all of a sudden, the child doesn't want to go to school, all of a sudden, the child is withdrawn. All of a sudden, the child now becomes very defensive, and defiant, then you should be able to know that something is wrong. Because, for example, you just, what you stated now, for example, if you look at adolescent depression, for example, it will not come like the real adult of who low mood, weakness, and the way they will be feeling. No. They can just become to, they begin to throw tantrums. They begin to become defiant. Some will not go to school. So, ability not to judge them or say, oh, you want to become a bad child. No, I must do this for you. This has will not contain two of us. Mm -mm. This is the time for you to observe that what is going on. Is that child being bullied in school? Is the child not performing well? 
is the child doing a particular course which he doesn't like? You want him to be in science class so that he can be a, a, a doctor. This guy wants to be a musician or an actor or an actress. And at the end of the day, you continue to pressurize. So when there is a personality change, you begin to see and you know that something is wrong. And that's the time to sit with the person or look for someone that the child is closer to. And that is what happens in every other form of mental illness. Whether you are friends with an adult or not, there is that change in behavior. You know, how we've heard lately in Nigeria, for instance, we've heard cases, increased cases of um, suicide and all of that. And these are the ones that have somewhat expressed themselves. There are others who are in there and they've not come out. Um, what are the things you, you notice that, w that would drive you, for instance, you who's advocating for mental health awareness, what are the things that you notice that would drive you to get to that point where you say, hello, everybody, we need to wake up. It's all around us. Um, it is all around us. Let us start with that. Um, I think we are in denial, but increasingly, maybe because of the social media age, we're beginning to hear things more instantly. And because of visuals, we're seeing them very, in a very vivid way. I think the statistics don't lie as well, even though to a large extent, I believe it might even be understated, especially in Nigeria, um, because a whole lot of cases either go unreported or untreated, you know, and all of that. So we don't even get the full picture. But it's just that um, we need to look at the reality. People are taking their lives. People are suicidal. People are abusing substances. And we can see that all around us, that's the truth. Even in workplaces, at home, you know, even in religious institutions, we are seeing more and more of those cases coming up. So it's one thing for us to turn our faces away and just hope that, okay, well, maybe over time, you know, let's, we're all right, or thank God, or, you know, we use all of those other nuances to patch things up as against dealing with the reality of what mental health is. And I think it's also, I mean, people not being able to speak up again is largely driven by the narrative that we've told in Nigeria over a while and maybe part of it globally because the fight for mental health awareness and the eradication of suicide um, or stigma rather is still a global movement you know um, the language we've used to describe mental health or just thinking about mental health and you're thinking it's illness or it's mad people as against it being that okay maybe there's been an, a stressor or a trauma that maybe you need to deal with so I think we need to get to a place where, and that's why as an advocate, it's about putting people who have lived through these circumstances at the forefront of the narrative. Being able to say, okay, fine, I have been suicidal before, or I have lived with bipolar and PTSD or depression, and here is my story. So we humanize the story so people realize that, okay, maybe it's not that bad. Maybe I too can begin to talk about it or at least seek help mm -hmm. for mine. Dr. Ndupu, if from what she said, we look at people and from what all of you have said, we look at people and we'll just put them out there. Some well-dressed, some not well-dressed, but they're going through things. Is it about the loss of, as I say, the milk of human kindness, that we have lost touch with each other? What is it that has taken us out of that place where we don't longer notice what's around us, besides the stigma? When sometimes, Neota, and um, a lot of people are going through issues, a lot of people, until people come out and say, oh, I'm experiencing this. So sometimes people are preoccupied with their own issues, that you don't even recognize a colleague who is crying out for help. Dr. Nodi was saying something about um, parents or, um, identity or caregivers identifying signs of a mental illness. There was a study done couple of years back and um, the study was done with a thousand about a thousand and five uh, one thousand five hundred adolescents people aged between um, 15 14 to about 19 years and the study showed that 20 percent of them have been having suicidal ideas 12 percent have attempted suicide the previous year and this study was carried out. That means you could be living with a child, you don't even notice that there is a change. As a parent, you may be so preoccupied with work, the stressors, you know, you're dealing with your own issues, and sometimes you just, the same rule applies. Your partner, your next neighbor, your colleague at work, and you don't even 
remember or you don't even see a need to be bothered about why this why is he looking this way he's been withdrawn at work i think that's another reason why not that we don't really care to an extent that's one reason and then the issue of social media has become a lot of concern for me we're beginning to see the pattern that um some people can't be bothered but we're just discussing the case of suicide where someone um talked about a certain time to take this act and there were people on Twitter, people were saying all sorts, encouraging them to take their life. Yes. And, and people just take this very lightly. They laugh about it. And I'm like, mm. how did we get to this point? Sometimes people think, oh, he's seeking attention. That may not be the case. When we think there's attention, to be genuine cry for help new cry for help and before anyone goes ahead to complete a suicide studies have shown that when we say um, 800,000 take their lives globally yearly we know that for every attempt of suicide or any suicide that is completed there are 25 attempts 25 times so for every 40 seconds someone is dying from suicide be sure that there are about 25 people somewhere around making attempts trying trying Wow. Mm. The myths. The, this myth. Let's, let me just pull them out. Mental health problems don't affect me. Um, children don't experience mental health problems. Um, people with mental health problems are violent and unpredictable. People with mental health needs, even those who are managing their mental illness, cannot tolerate the stress of holding down a job. In other words, they don't need a job. Personality weakness or character flaws cause mental health problems. People with mental health problems can snap out if they try hard enough. Is that it? Um, there is no hope for people with mental health problems. Once a friend or family member develops mental health problems, he or she will never recover. Therapy and self-help are a waste of time. Why bother when you can just take a pill? I can't do anything for a person with mental health problems. Prevention doesn't work. It is impossible to prevent mental health. Mental illness. Mental illness. <laughs> Dr. Nubi, these are the myths. Yeah, and I see how we're smiling. So yeah. please, weigh in on this before we bring her in. Yeah, uh, I know he's been doing a lot of work demystifying the myth. And as much as possible, as advocates, that's what we've also been doing. You know, it grieves my heart when you were saying all these things. Because I felt we're going back to the Stone Age, the medieval, the Renaissance period when they did not understand the concept of mental illness. We've gone through all those times where people were doing, they would puncture the skull so that the evil spirit can go away. Or the medieval period, they would send you to the bush so that when you suffer very well and you are hungry, the evil spirit can leave you, you cannot die peacefully. Or the era of exorcism, when they put you in vanguard, beat you, tie you, so that they will make the evil spirit inside you uncomfortable. These are poor knowledge of mental health or mental illness. And then we moved to this present century where we discovered that mental illness is just like hypertension, diabetes, or anything. The way hypertension will affect my heart. Diabetes is the pancreas, I will have kidney problem. They also, also, when the brain has problem, I tell people the organs in our body, when there's a problem, I'm using glasses because there's an affectation of my eyes and I can't see very far. So I need to use a corrective lens. So also, the brain is for movement, is for thinking, is for behavioral, and every other thing. So when a part of the brain is affected, the behavior that that part of the brain modulates is also affected. If this is my frontal lobe, for example, frontal lobe in the brain, this side. If it is affected, I will likely not dress here. I will likely not comport myself. My judgment will be impaired. And then you see me, you say it is the arrow of the enemy. Just hold your thoughts. We'll take a quick break and we'll come back to continue this conversation. Please don't go away. Welcome back. We're still talking about mental health awareness. And a colleague of mine just passed a message across to me that even the rich also cry. Yeah. I mean, in the news today, the Prince, Prince William even revealed that he had mental health pressures. So it's not just about the poor. I mean, following from that story we saw, let me bring you in, Howard, the, these myths that are there. How can we begin to get people more aware of the role that psychologists, psychiatrists can play in any of these roles? Um, 
So I'm, I'm a big advocate of conversation. And I think that's because it helps us to normalize. It helps to bring new stories out. So we unlearn and then we relearn new ways of talking about it, thinking about it, and picturing it. Because when we think of all these myths, they were valid at some point in time, you know, because of the limited knowledge, limited awareness. So people felt like, yeah, this, this is what it is. But as we got more knowledgeable and people began to, you know, um, reframe what mental health was, people began to tell their own stories. So it was no longer about the single narrative of what we've been told or what we've been sold in movies or in media, where you see a man, he did something bad, then all of a sudden he's on the streets, and there's that narrative of, ah, that means this mental illness thing is, you have done something wrong, the village people are after you, you know, and things like that. Mm -hmm. But we need to begin to tell a new story, that, okay, I look good, I speak well, but I'm dealing with a mental health problem. And then people are like, oh, okay, really, are you sure? Or you don't mm. look like it. And I'm like, what does that look like? Yes. Mm. Look like because you're ragged and on the street. street. Exactly. Yes, yes. So we need to have those conversations. Mm. So it is, again, back to every one of us, of course, in the, in the space, and every single individual being able to participate in this conversation to say, okay, yes, I've been there. What do you want to know? How do we have this new conversation? Oh, no, it's actually not that. Mm. It is this. I remember when I first came out about my mental health issues, and people asked me, oh, did you get her broken? And I'm like, what does that have to do with anything? <laughs> you know, I don't... Maybe these are some of the things that lead to... Uh, well, but also it comes from a place of those myths, those things that you've, you've spoken about. Yeah. Again, yeah. that misinformed narrative, mm. a narrative that is not complete. It may mm. be true in its individual bits, yeah. but when you put it together, it's incomplete and misinformed information. So mm. it's about going back to say, okay, fine, I get all this information, but guys, let's put it together in the right way. Let me begin to tell you what it's like for me to take antidepressants. Do you know that I, I hold a job? Do you know that you know, I have a master's degree? Do you know that, I mean, I'm sitting here and I'm having a conversation. That's not the image that a lot of Nigerians have yeah. about mental health. Very correct. So if we do not come out and begin to retell the stories, mm. then people are going to be stuck in that battle of, oh yes, it's for you weak people, it's laziness, oh you've done something wrong, my friend gets up, praise God, you know, and things like that. So it's again, conversations, conversations, conversations. That's the only way we can retell the narrative, simply because that narrative wasn't brought about by us having conversations. It was programming. The movies you mm. watched automatically told you that that was what mental health was. And you didn't have a chance to debate. You didn't have a chance to think about it. You just subconsciously accepted it. But now we need to foster a new image. We need to create new conversations. The issue of cure. Mm. Uh, does mental health, who I bring in that part, there's a little bit of abuse of individuals. We talked about abuse of um, drugs, drug abuse. Yeah. Sometimes a product of mental health. Mm -hmm. Sometimes. Sometimes peer pressure. That's why I use the word sometimes. But the issue of abuse of other people, I mean, battering, for instance, can it be a product of mental abuse? And how do we get to the point of cure here? Battering, abuse of other people. Uh, As in, you want to, uh, you want to, I want to express myself, uh, all bottled up, I need to let it out, and then you take it out on somebody next. Yes, we know from research, we all know that people who exhibit behaviors like that they usually have underlying psychological issues. Yes, some form of psychological issues that need to be addressed. That's why you see, you know, we have had reported cases of um, domestic violence that became fertile, someone died. As, as little or as much as anger issues, is a mental health issue that needs to be addressed. But people don't even know, and they tell you that I'm that way. They want to continue on that path. Yes, people need to understand that when there are issues, no one is immune to a mental illness. I'm not immune, you are not immune, she's not immune to a mental illness. If we find ourselves in unfavorable conditions, several things, there's a genetical role, there's the social factors that all interplay before people break down with a mental illness. So if we understand that, we know that there's a place to seek help. There's a place to get, you know, get the attention we need. I like something about that video that was shown. For me, it was a beautiful one. It's like putting this man, the before and the after picture. This is the man who was a vagrant. He practically dragged 
I'm sure for that to have gone on, the wife too must have had some form of mental illness mm -hmm. for her to move with the man that way. Yeah. And then you see the process. They were brought out of the street. They were taken to a facility. All they did there, Federal Neuropsychiatric Hospital, was drug treatment, Education. talk therapy. People are yet to appreciate that. We need to get away from, they take him to one native doctor, they put people in chains. Yes. It's still going on as we speak today. There are people chained in homes. There are people being flogged. I saw a video of a little girl. They kept with broomsticks, evil spirit. I said this may just be one of these kids who have hyperactivity disorder, yeah, no seizure. And they said they were casting evil spirit off this child. And I was like, in this day and age, I'm glad people are able to see that yes. video and know yes. all it takes is getting you into treatment, medications, yeah. and talk therapy. Okay. okay. Okay, you, you all have your work cut out because uh, these things are, that they are inherent in our society and we need to come out of it because in other climes, people are not ashamed to say, I'm going to see my therapist. Mm -hmm. You know, they're not ashamed to say, but in this country, it is something that you do not even talk about. But we need to get from that place to a place where we can always seek help and know that because we're, we're not going to be stigmatized for seeking help. Thank you very much for Thank coming you. and explaining all this to us this Thank morning. Um, consultant psychiatrist, uh, Dr. Ogonaya Ndupu, uh, Dr. Peter Nubi, also a consultant psychiatrist, and uh, Hawa Ujefo, a mental health advocate. Thank you very much for coming Thank to for put the spotlight on this particular issue this morning. Thank you. Sunrise will be right back with another interesting conversation. Do join us.